let me just jump in uh, and start with A.J. Brown with you because we had Mike Vrabel on this program just uh, two, three weeks ago and asked him about any rumors about A.J. Brown, and he's like, as long as I'm a coach, he's going to be here, and he's still a coach, and now he's playing for your team. When did he show up on your radar screen, Howie? Well, it, it's hard not to be aware of A.J. Brown and what kind of player he is and the difference that he makes. Um, you know, it's, it's, you just watch him in the playoffs. You watch him um, every game, really, since he's played in the National Football League and the guy's a difference maker. And I just think, um, you know, it was something that had to work for both sides and uh, for where we were and uh, where Tennessee is. Um, I'm appreciative of J-Rob and Coach Rabel, and um, I think it was a win-win situation um, where they were able to get – um, picks, uh, cost control picks, and you know we're in a situation with a young quarterback on a rookie deal that we were able to kind of uh, take a swing here at a great player. So uh, did that happen day before draft, weeks before? Like, can you walk me through the timeline? Yeah, I, I, th- I think uh, as you get closer to the draft, you know, conversations get more serious because of the deadline of, of, of the draft, and um, especially when you're talking about first-round picks and being able to use them that year and improve your team as opposed to, you know, going forward. And so – um, you know, it came together pretty quickly in the 24 hours before the draft, and then um, we had a balance kind of um, being on the clock with our other pick and, and uh, being aware that uh, at the 18th pick, if, if we weren't finished with our deal, obviously that wouldn't work for us or uh, the Titans. And so trying to finish a deal with, with AJ's representatives, Tor Dandy, who's unbelievable and longtime uh, relationship with him and Jimmy Sexton and um, and those guys at CAA, and so um, that's what we were, we were doing, and we made the trade for Jordan, and then got back on the phone and uh, closed the deal with with AJ, and then um, we're on the clock at 18, able to announce it to to really even even people in the building for the first time because there's so much going on, and you didn't want to like uh, have this tease, hey, we may get AJ Brown, and um, you know, so we we really uh, when we were on the clock was the first time I think that we're able even to exhale and tell everyone here. So it, it was kind of cool. Well, I think it, it, it is, it's also, um, you know, kind of cool in terms of uh, from someone in my position observing this, where the conversation you hear about what's potentially going on with Debo in San Francisco, DK Metcalf in Seattle, and A.J. Brown, formerly of Tennessee, three years in the league, wanting to get paid similar to, say, what Devontae Adams or Tyreek Hill, who have more time in the league, would be paid. And Tennessee, uh, despite knowing the player and the coach loving the player, decides uh, we prefer to trade and then draft on the spot his replacement, who's his exact comp, according to my guy Daniel Jeremiah. And you're my like, guy, DJ, yeah. he's our guy. <laughs> he's right? our guy, right? Our guy. And and so, but you're like, you know what? We'll trade the first a first round selection for him and pay him. Why did you you why are you do you feel comfortable about doing something like that? Howie. Well, because we it's the known factor. Like we know who AJ Brown is. We know who he is in the National Football League. And no matter how confident you are about players in the draft, there's still the unknown factor. You know, you're you're changing schemes, you're changing location, you're putting money in their pocket. And I'm not saying that to be critical of anyone in this sure. draft. You know, I'm just saying that's the reality of it. I mean, you look back at the history of the first round of the draft and, you know, four of ten guys end up not playing well. And you know, um, I think it's it's really two of ten of them. You got a twenty percent chance of hitting on a Pro Bowl player, and so I think um, because of the amount of, of high picks that we've had, we have coming up. You know, we felt like this was a guy that that fit for us. You know, the situation made sense for us. You know, and certainly not talking about anyone else, just us. You know, it was a compliment to what we had um, in the building, in the room, and um, we felt from an offensive perspective he was almost like a, a missing piece there because of his skill set. And adding him in and the known quality that and commodity that he is is different than taking a guy, you know, um, and, and plugging him in and saying, yeah, like this guy can be this. Well, we know who he is. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here. 